Hello everyone. Now we will study about the sulci and gyri of the cerebral hemisphere. It is always better to study the sulci and gyri separately because the names of many sulci and gyri are similar which may be confusing for beginners. In this session, we will begin with the sulci present in the superlateral surface as well as the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere at a time. Here is the outline of cerebral hemisphere. When you draw, this has a frontal lobe, an occipital lobe and a temporal lobe. I have drawn the same outline for the superlateral surface as well as the medial surface. This may be easy to draw rather than drawing a mirror image to show the other surface. To understand this is the medial surface, I am drawing the corpus callosum. Here is the fornix. So this is the medial surface. And this is a superlateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere. The cerebral hemisphere has four lobes which can be seen from outside. There is a fifth lobe which is named as insula but this cannot be seen from the surface. It is buried deep inside the lateral sulcus. First of all I will be telling about the sulcus separating each lobes. Then the sulci present in each lobe one by one. So here is it. The lateral sulcus is a very deep sulcus which begins in the medial aspect. It has a stem and this lateral sulcus runs in between the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe. On reaching the superlateral surface, this lateral sulcus divides into three ramus, one anterior ramus, ascending ramus and a posterior ramus. So now this posterior ramus divides mainly the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe. So as in the medial aspect, it separates the frontal and the temporal lobe. Here is the central sulcus, which is also a very deep sulcus that divides the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. On the medial aspect, there is a deep sulcus beginning inferior to the splenium of the corpus callosum that runs posteriorly and upwards, reaches the superior border of the cerebral hemisphere. From the superior border, it curves to the superior lateral surface and this sulcus is named as the parieto occipital sulcus because that sulcus is going to separate the parietal and the occipital lobe. But on the superlateral surface, the separation is incomplete. We can see a small notch anterior to the occipital pole named as a preoccipital notch. When you connect the preoccipital notch and the parieto occipital sulcus on the superlateral surface, this imaginary line separates the occipital lobe from the parietal lobe above and temporal lobe below. Similarly, the central sulcus is extending to the medial surface also. Here we have four lobes, the frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe and temporal lobe. Here is frontal, parietal, occipital and temporal lobe. Now we will see the sulci present in each lobe. In the frontal lobe, in front of the central sulcus, you can see a sulcus named as the precentral sulcus. You can see two sulcus, one above and another below in the frontal lobe named as a superior and inferior frontal sulcus. Here is the anterior ramus and ascending ramus of the lateral sulcus. On the medial aspect, you can see a sulcus which is going around the corpus callosum named as the cingulate sulcus that begins in front of the rostrum of the corpus callosum. Sulci in the parietal lobe. There is a sulcus present behind the central sulcus named as the post central sulcus. There is another sulcus present within the parietal lobe named as the intraparietal sulcus. On the medial aspect, there is a sulcus in the parietal lobe above the splenium, hence named as the supraspleneal sulcus. The sulci in the temporal lobe are two in the superlateral aspect based on the position. This is named as superior temporal sulcus and this inferior temporal sulcus. On the inferior medial aspect of the temporal lobe, here 
is the uncus and this is the collateral sulcus. There is another sulcus which is extending from the temporal to the occipital lobe named as the temporo-occipital sulcus or it can also be called as the occipitotemporal sulcus. Coming to the occipital lobe, on the medial aspect there is a deep sulcus beginning from the parieto-occipital sulcus running towards the occipital lobe and this curves to the superlateral surface that is named as the calcarine sulcus. This calcarine sulcus extends to the superlateral surface and here it is named as the post calcarine sulcus. There is another sulcus around this post calcarine sulcus named as the lunate sulcus. The precentral sulcus and postcentral sulcus are extending to the medial surface. Now we will name the gyrus in the superlateral surface as well as the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. We will consider each lobe one by one. Here is a frontal lobe. Superior frontal sulcus and inferior frontal sulcus divides this frontal lobe into three gyrus. Here is superior frontal gyrus, middle frontal gyrus and inferior frontal gyrus. And this anterior ramus and ascending ramus is dividing this gray matter into three parts named pars orbitalis, pars triangularis and pars opercularis. And this gyrus immediately in front of the central sulcus is named as precentral gyrus. Coming to the parietal lobe, the intraparietal sulcus is dividing the temporal lobe into a superior parietal lobule and inferior parietal lobule. Superior parietal. There are two gyrus of semilunar shaped at the end of the posterior end of the posterior ramus of lateral sulcus and another at the posterior end of the superior temporal gyrus. This is named as supramarginal gyrus angular gyrus. Here is superior temporal sulcus middle temporal sulcus and inferior temporal gyrus. So here is superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus and inferior temporal gyrus. On the medial aspect, the gyrus between the cingulate sulcus and corpus callosum is named as gyrus cinguli 
and this is the medial frontal gyrus this is precentral and that is postcentral this is uncus and this gyrus here is the para hippocampal gyrus and this is the medial occipital temporal gyrus and this is the lateral occipital temporal gyrus this part is named as the cuneus and this is precuneus so these are the gyrus present in the superlateral surface as well as the medial surface thank you